Distorted Wish. Prologue. Wish. I wish I wasn't Adrian Agrest. Adrian stared up at the sky, stars twinkling across the sky. Adrian is a model, a perfect son, an utter angel. Everyone's always falling over for my looks and reputation. He sighed, looking over to Plague, the cat Kwame curled up on top of the blanket Natalie had brought him when she'd spotted him out on the balcony. Couldn't have their precious model catching a cold just days before another important photo shoot. This time it would be for a fashion magazine showcasing a collaboration between the Gabrielle brand and another brand name, kicking off with a teen line featuring the Gabrielle brand star model. His father wasn't even scared to be there for the shoot. I just wish I could be Chen Noir all the time, he said, smelling wistfully. Plague's whole body seemed to lift and fall with each breath, lost in dreamland. Chen Noir doesn't have an angel reputation to hold up. Chen Noir is... He's Chen Noir. He doesn't have to do anything anybody ex tells him to do. The demanding black cat knocking the glass off the table. He's always doing the unexpected. Adrian looked up in time to see something bright streak across the night sky. Probably a satellite passing over Paris. He laughed and scooped up the blanket and plague, heading back inside. December was too cold to sit around all night on the balcony in pajamas. Being Adrian is too much work, he whispered to no one. It's no fun at all. A sound like a disgruntled meow came from the bundle of blanket. When he woke up the next morning, the night before felt like a dream. Natalie gave him his schedule as he ate breakfast before hurrying him out the door to his ride. When an Akuma alert interrupted class, he embraced his spot at Ladybug's side, kicking off the battle with perfect pun. He didn't have to hold back here. Chapter 1. What a scoop. It was cold out, but that didn't stop Alia from running out into the frigid Paris winter air. Earlier, she tied her sweater around her waist in the heated classroom, but she had no time to pull it on properly. There was an Akuma on the loose, and where there was an Akuma, there was Ladybug and Chanoir, and where those two were, Alia had to follow. For the Ladyblog, for the people. The Akuma screeched, her voice making frost shatter on the fringes of car windows. Alia winced. She could have sworn that sounded like the history teacher. She swiped out her phone, focused on her goal. Following the screams, racing past the people running in the opposite direction, straight towards the epicenter of the danger, where her great journalistic scoop was waiting. Latched onto data, the live stream started almost immediately. I bring you live, from Paris, an Akuma attack, she had to shout over the screams. A rapidly rising number was in the corner of the screen, a testament to just how many people relied on her for the latest superhero news. Not too far ahead, something made of stone crashed and crumbled. Screams died down as people reached safer ground. The roads cleared to abandoned cars and chunks of stone littering the streets, to somewhere she could actually hear herself. Most had already escaped, either deep inside buildings to safe rooms, or out of the area entirely. And there's our show's protagonist, the heroine of Paris, Ladybug! Alia shifted her phone camera's attention to the rooftops, her red streak swinging into frame. A blip at first, but Alia had invested in getting only the best for her viewers. The new phone soon fo refocused on the hero, highlighting black spots and catching the yo-yo strong in actual pixels. I'm getting closer to the scene, viewers. Let's trust our heroes can handle an extra news journalist on the fringe of the action. Alia briefly paused, streaming. She wrangled with her sweater as she ran, Ladybug and the action out of view for the moment. She wouldn't be much help to her viewers if her phone died too early just because she kept the video going through a period of boring. The battery was already low from forgetting to charge her phone overnight. She had her sweater on properly as she ran around corners, racing, following the sounds of destruction. Her teacher's voice reached new pitches, but it was some same lecture of official names of soldiers and politicians that she was well familiar with, following the textbook back at school. Alia skidded onto the scene, and out came her phone, immediately connecting to the stream and giving her viewers the information they needed to know. Ladybug, facing off a woman in an old military uniform. Do you hear the people sing? Alia whirled around, her phone whirling with her, the imagery focusing on a grinning cat perched on top of an empty car, singing the song of angry men. Shanor continued with the teasing song lyric, stepping down from his perch. He put a clawed digit over her phone's camera lens. It's not safe here for you, he warned. You need to get out of the way and let the superheroes handle this. Alia pulled her phone away, the screen reflecting a blurry image of a relaxed, confident Chanoir who didn't waver like the screen. The people deserve to know, she insisted. The people deserve you safe and sound, so that you can sing for them again another day. Alia snorted. Les miserables jokes? 
Yeah, my jokes are pretty miserable today, huh? Shenhua grinned, twirling his baton behind his back and over his shoulders. Now scram before she gets to the Robespierre chapter of the textbook. Alia pursed her lips, pointedly aiming her phone back at the action. Ladybug skipped around several historical statues come to life, avoiding the sharp points of their muskets. She glanced at them, and her voice rang out in annoyance. Cha, quit playing around and come help with me with this. Aye, aye, my lady. With only that exchange's warning, Cha suddenly scooped Alia up in his arms. She had no time to protest before he was running with her in his arms, held close to his chest. The video on her phone screen bounced. The stream's bitrate had to be crying from this trauma. She put a hand on his chest, trying to struggle out of his grip, but she froze when he jumped. Too high of a jump to be the ability of any normal person. But then again, that was why they were the superheroes. Shanwar put her down while she was still in a daze from the jump, and cold wind whipped at her hair. He bowed, exaggerated and out of place, sharp canines poking through his grin. Stay safe. Then he stepped away, leaning back, and fell off the side of the building. Elia ran to the edge, and her phone caught the last moment of his back foot before he landed on all fours on the ground. Do you? She pressed a hand to her chest, scolding herself for being silly. It wasn't even a very tall building. Not sure enough that she could jump down just the same as him, though, to her chagrin. She had a good view of the action from here, watching as Shao returned to the fight, but not good enough. Just hold on, viewers. I'll do my best to get closer. She hurried to look for a ladder or stairs or... She found a rough, rusty ladder on the side of the building, cold as ice from the temperature, but she stuck her phone in her pocket and wrapped her sleeves over her hands. An alley wasn't the best place to film from, so she ran out to the street, the sounds of crushing stone never wavering. She grinned, whipping out her phone again. She could still catch more shots of the action. Chet Noir had come up close and personal with her camera, but she still had yet to get good ladybug shots that day. She ran towards the action, hopping up on benches every now and then to get a good shot of the action, but nothing was good enough. She had to get closer. For the people. Before she could get close enough, she skidded to a stop. Her breath clouded white in front of her as a black streak went flying through the air. And not of his own accord, Alia could see Shanor flailing, a very not-deliberate scream reaching her phone. She watched him smack against the side of a building and slide down into an alley. She wavered, rocking on her heels, but he didn't reappear. She glanced back to the action, to Ladybug, then dashed. Shanoir, Alia still held out her phone in front of her, filming something. She didn't know. She supposed she'd find out in a minute. She turned into the alley. Her phone's camera landed on the collapsed form of Shanoir on the ground, his baton rolling into a puddle. Something beeped, flashing on Shaz's hand. Her phone beeped, briefly displaying a low battery icon before going dark. End chapter one.